listeners. So we're excited about it. Motivation comes from action is one of the things that I read. And I love seeing somebody else build notes with mine because it is such an experience for me. Elaborate on this for me and what that means when you take it to your coaches. You are not in a great frame of mind. Your energy is not good if you are sitting on the couch for three hours. In fact, as someone who just had a long flight back home after sitting in the airline seat for a couple hours, getting up is uncomfortable. We are designed to move. It gets our blood pumping. It puts us in a better energetic state and it allows us to think. We now, in all of the retreats that I put on, we build in hiking. No matter what the retreat is, hiking is a component because we found people will open up. You get into a more of a flow state when you're moving. It is hard to get into a flow state, even a creative, if they're sitting still. And so it is regular exercise is a key component. Um, you cannot live a fulfilled and well-rounded life if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not exercising. And quite honestly, uh, I've had people over the years, they will go, oh, I don't have energy for that. I'm like, you don't lose energy by exercising. Again, maybe for a few minutes after, if you hit it really hard, but it is energizing in the long run. And going to be honest today. So I just got back in a couple of days ago. Last night was my monthly poker game. I was up later than usual. I did not want to go to the gym. I did my coffee first. And then I was like, oh, we've got the recording. And I'm like, I don't want to be sitting all day and then come do this. So I went to the gym and knocked out 45 minute workout. I wasn't tired afterwards. I was energized. And, you know, then I'm like, all right, I can't wait to do this. And I think people misunderstand how important it is to keep moving and to be moving on a regular basis, getting your steps in, getting your exercise in. You show up as a better version of you. Yeah, it's it's funny to me, as in ironic, that people believe it's a time suck and it's actually improving your efficiency. And there's, I'm sure, a ton of medical background that neither one of us is going to be able to speak to, but it makes you more efficient the way your brain works and just your ability to stay awake and think we're, we're huge exercisers here. And we have all kinds of challenges that we add, not because we are some kind of physical coach, but because we believe that it makes you show up better, both professionally and personally. What's interesting to me, beyond the fact that we share the commonality in the thought of exercising as being important, is that the motivation comes from action. When we're talking about people wanting to have success at an additional level, they think, oh my gosh, it's going to take the same amount of effort to build a second time what I got the first time. And I was just having this conversation uh, with a large group of women that I partner with. It's really not. You have to have this body of work, but when you have a supplemental body of work, one feeds into the other. And it's the same with exercise. If I have exercise, I will do the rest of my work more efficiently and better. If I have a current level of success, I can have my second level of success more efficiently and better. It's like a a good bubble wand that's got all kinds of bubbles blowing out on top of it when we were little kids. But when you're going to build that second business, you knew these three things didn't work the first business. This set of things over here worked amazing. So instead of learning and trudging through all of that, you take what works, you evaluate what didn't work, see if any of it applies to the new business you're going to be more efficient and quicker getting up to speed. Uh, And I would argue you're well served, add a lot more energy to it initially, just to get overcome inertia. But I think then you are using your knowledge and intelligence and wisdom that you've learned from your other businesses to fine tune and propel this one. 
I used to tell my swimmers when I was coaching uh, varsity swim and dive, you fall to your highest level of preparedness. So if we go out and we give ourselves the opportunity to practice, go to the gym every day, practice our business every day, practice with our kids and being a parent, being a spouse, whatever that looks like in your role for you every day, then when the rubber meets the road and things aren't going so well, then when you dip down and maybe you falter, then how low can you fall? Like if you've practiced up here at this really high level, the higher you raise the bar, when you fall, maybe it won't be so low. You catch yourself sooner. Yeah. And I would take the B plus level swimmer with the amazing work ethic over the freakishly talented A plus with a poor work ethic every day of the week. And I'm sure you, you've you seen that play out time and time again. If you have extreme talent and, and a lazy work ethic, it, it's really a waste. Yeah, think about who you'd hire. If you were the employer and that was on somebody's resume, which one would you take? I did hiring for a while and I hired a truck driver once for a shop manager position. And I'm going to name a couple, uh, I'm gonna repeat a couple of quotes. I thought you were an idiot for hiring him. Uh -oh. Same thing. And, and I had the same comment on hiring a field guy because, but they got it. And when you interviewed him, you realized you had somebody who they happened to be doing this right now. And they were doing it because it worked for them and they were looking to transition. And when you interviewed him, you're like, I want people like this on my team. It's the, the whole bus thing, get the right people on the bus. And the two hires that I was most criticized for at the time were the two of the more successful ones. The field employee who everyone thought I was an idiot for hiring became a foreman in nine months. He lost 50 pounds. He was able to manage high school kids managing a music store. And he was a woodworker and he truly loved creating. And when I interviewed him, I'm like, yeah, I offered him a job on the spot and he got in shape with working physically. He lost weight. He was good with people and he got promoted. He was one of the quickest ever to go from not working in construction to a foreman that we ever had. Yeah. High energy, willing to commit and had the ability to follow through. Yes. You know, so for people who can't kind of uh, sh are struggling with this concept of the importance of it. You know, I think the most important things that we can identify in ourselves or in another person in an interaction would be, what does your energy level feel like? If you're struggling with it, how do you change it? And in another, and in another person, what are they willing to put forth in their energy or how do they change it? How are they willing to take a look inside and identify their energy level? And then once you get into the interaction between two people, that's a different topic.